presentation around leadership and sustainable development. Today, we're going to have another discussion that we know to our benefits. But by courtesy of Gold PLC, V5 Solutions Limited, and FV Global Consults, we wouldn't have been able to bring you this program. So let's take a quick message from our sponsors, and we shall be right back. on my honor to be a better leader every day faithful and loyal to my country organization and fellow team members countrymen and women I pledge myself to remain true to the core values of integrity and self-discipline through my daily choices and actions my mind is alert focused at all times I shall show respect to everyone always and every time I remain a better leader and team player always. So I pledge. Welcome back. This is Leadership 360. We are live on Metro TV, DSTV channel 277, and live on Facebook at Metro TV Ghana, and live on VOL online radio as well. If this is your first time of tuning in into this program, it is a program that is meant for you and I to take a second look at our leadership styles, our approach to leading people, our teamwork, and to ensure that at the end of the day, all of us work towards the betterment of our communities, our countries, and the continent of Africa at large. Or if you like, extend, extend it to cover the entire globe because you and I are the reason for the world, and we need to make it a better place. Leadership 360 has been in existence for some time now. Season 1 has gone. We are in Season 2. As I said, last week we treated the topic Leadership and Sustainable Development, where we had Farouk Kailan, the CEO of Premium Africa Holding, on set. We had a lot of um, discourse. We had so much discourse on the topic, and it was very interesting. Today, we're going to have somehow a continuation of that conversation, but in another context where we're going to talk about the paradox of leadership. Life itself is very paradoxical. Conflicting situations at all times, whether across um, political divide or religious divide or even corporate environment, leadership is very paradoxical. But what do we mean by all these paradoxical uh, concepts around leadership? That is what we're going to pursue today, or we're going to have a discussion around today. I am your regular host, Dr. Victor Abe, and we're going to have the phone line also open along the line for your contributions. Those of us who were not able to contribute last week to that discussion, opportunity is here as well for you to raise issues that you felt you wanted to raise, but you couldn't have the opportunity. So this is our discussion for today. Paradox of leadership. Like I said, life itself is paradoxical. Leadership across all spheres of life, all sectors, all human endeavor is very paradoxical, challenging with divergent needs at any point in time. But leadership must still strive to achieve whatever it sets to achieve. But just to put it in the right context, let's quickly revisit what we have established widely on this program, that leadership as we define it on this program is not about the titles that individuals hold, 
It's not about the positions they hold. It's not about the status, the authority they wield. It's not about command and control. It is about your ability to set directions, provide guidance to the team, harness the capabilities of the team towards the attainment of a goal. Continuous provision of that direction, all guidance is what we mean by leadership. So having established that, let's make no mistake to think that leadership is about position of authority. No, it is about your ability. It's a capability you need to, to, to have or to develop in order to lead people, in order to guide people towards an end state. So that is what it is. Now, if that is what it is, what are we talking about paradox? There are times in your leadership effort where you come across very conflicting situations, either to do A or to do B. But at the end of the day, an action must be taken all the same. So we need to have understanding that if you want to be an effective leader, you must have an awareness about these paradoxes where you have to make a choice between the two, if you like, the two evils or the two uh, ends. So that at the end of the day, it is about achieving the, the, the end state where everybody will be happy. Everybody will, will attest to the fact that indeed the process has been challenging but fulfilling. So let's look at some reality check. Leadership is, you know, everyday thing that we juggle with, whether you like it or not. There are situations where practically, for example, you, you, you set off from home with a whole plan line up for you or activity line up for the day. You get to office and or you get to your team and a new development comes up. Will you follow that plan, or you're going to stick, you, you, you sort out the situation before you get back to your, your, your plan for the day? These are choices we, we, we need to make on a daily basis. It is also the fact that it can be overwhelming sometimes, as a leader, that you are, there are demands, there are requirements, there are goals to be achieved, and they are all timed. They all have timelines attached to them. But Developments within the, you know, the day or within the time space requires that you need to quickly juggle between two ends or two different or divergent uh, issues that will, 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 you know, at the end of the day, still inure to the benefits of your organization or your team. And these are the things that are real with all of us. In the current workplace, where, for example, you have different types of you know, generations or different generations across um, the workspace where they have different characteristics, they have different expectations, stakeholders have different expectations, but the leader is expected to equip him or herself and the team members with certain qualities to deliver on those things, regardless of whatever expectation. How do you go about it? So when we talk about paradoxical, you know, or paradox, what do we mean? It entails basically about very interrelated elements which must all be sorted out. They exist to complement each other sometimes or they exist for the leaders to appreciate the fact that leadership is not a straight jacket thing. It's not a straightforward thing. It is not something that you just get up and say because you are in a position of authority or you occupy a certain role, you have what it takes. It takes more than just that. So paradoxical here is about a difference between novelty and sticking to tradition. How do you juggle between innovation and, you know, remaining with the tradition or the way things have been done over the period? How do you juggle between these two? Times are changing. We have established on this program that the pace of change or the velocity of change around the globe, around the workplace, around the communities we find ourselves in today are so fast that you cannot afford to remain very regimented. You need to be flexible in all your thinking, and that is what one needs to do in order to surmount any challenges or all the challenges that come with leadership. Now, there are very practical and established paradoxes that leaders face on a daily basis across the globe, regardless of your level of authority or your level of leadership that you provide for the team 
you are likely to face some of these issues on a daily basis. How do you understand these things and be able to surmount them? For example, we have established on this program again that leaders must exude confidence. They must exude confidence and at the same time, they must be humble. These are two you know, paradoxical ends that one needs to decide. But the understanding here is that confidence is not about being, you know, overindulging. It's not about lording it over people. It's not about letting your say stand at all times. It's about, you know, being pretty sure that whatever it is that needs to be done, you might see if you are not able to, you know, make choices between these two ends. A second point would be why you have your vision ahead of you that you have sold or you have been able to convince your team members to buy into. There are blind spots likely to come because new developments may render that vision, you know, um, useless, if I may use the word. And at the same time, you, you need to address those blind spots in the pursuit of your vision. So these are choices that leaders make. So while you are pursuing a vision that you have set out for yourself and for the team, you still have to pay attention to some of these blind spots to be able to address them. Now, effective leaders also want to embrace the fact that visibility and invisibility is very key to their success as leaders. This is not every time that you, as a leader, you have to be everywhere. There are times that you need to be invisible for things to be done. The Chinese general um, Lao, Lao Chu said, when the leader is absent and the work gets done, the members of the team appreciate very much more the contribution of the leader, even when he is present. Just, just to paraphrase what he said. So visibility and invisibility is a choice. At any point in time, you may decide that you have to be off the scene and allow your team members to exercise some freedom, some level of freedom to be creative, to be innovative in addressing the challenges that come your way. You cannot afford to be the one who is addressing all issues at all times. Otherwise, you're going to be a one-man you know, show person where if you are not there, nothing gets done. So leaders, as leaders, we must choose between visibility and invisibility at times. It is not all about you being present and you showing your, your, your authority or your, the fact that you are the one in charge for everybody to see. There are some workplaces that you go to you hardly see or you hardly differentiate between the one who is the, the CEO and the one who is the, the last person in the, at the bottom of the ladder. It is because the leader might have adopted a style where he allows people to exercise you know, innovation, creativity, and also contribute to the attainment of the goal. So a paradox like that, you must be conscious of it as a leader. All of us must appreciate that. Now, there are times that leaders need to be personal and they need to also focus on the collective good of the people, of the team members. It's also another paradox where leaders want to choose where do you draw the line? Personal interest and the group interest. A project is to be implemented. You have a personal interest in it. It is maybe probably part of your KPI to ensure that this is delivered. But the team members may have a divergent view on the project. How do you allow those divergent views to inform your decision as to what the project, how the project should be implemented? These are things that as a leader or as leaders we should appreciate as well. Now, there are standards that are set. Leaders must have standards. Great leaders have standards for their teams. But at the same time, they are expected to also be emotionally intelligent enough to forgive. 
or to be forgiven? How do you draw the line? So as not to allow or to permit or, or to, to kind of let people take advantage of your forgiveness or your empathy at all times. These are choices leaders need to, to make at one point in time. The fact is that leaders themselves sometimes may find themselves wanting when it comes to standards they have set for themselves. If you are strictly the principal type who is so stuck to the principal, to, to the standards set by the organization, and you are not interested in understanding circumstances under which certain events occur or certain you know, actions are taken, how will you be forgiven? How will you empathize with people? How will you be able to say, okay, I appreciate why ABCD was done? It's a choice. These are very divergent interests that must be satisfied at any point in time, and we have to be conscious of it. Also, there are issues about where you have to be stubborn and at the same time open-minded because the stubbornness of a leader is to sometimes push the team members to overcome challenges. Because the, by human nature, when we encounter challenges, we are, we are quick to say, this should, we should forget about it. Should, it is difficult. We cannot surmount this problem. We cannot go over this. Let's just let go and get back to you know, the basics. But leaders understanding the end state, having foresight, Having an in-depth, you know, understanding of the end state will have to or may have to be stubborn in pushing their members to, you know, persist and pursue those goals. But at the same time, they must also be conscious of the fact that, look, there are times that you need to have an open mind to appreciate what people are saying. Because if you are so fixated in your thinking and you think that whatever it is, it must work at all costs. You may hit the wall and sometimes may even cause financial loss to your organization or to your um, community or to wherever you find yourself or to your team. So it is important as well as a leadership dichotomy, uh, by the leadership paradox that, look, there are occasions when you have to have an open mind and listen to other people in the pursuit of your goals. Now, let's also understand this other paradox that has to do with the fact that leaders are expected to be teachers. They are expected to coach. They are expected to mentor their team members, provide guidance, provide direction, provide answers to certain difficult questions or challenges that may come their way. But at the same time, they must position themselves to be learners. Leaders must and appreciate the fact that in as much as you are to provide direction, guidance, and coach your people, there's a whole lot that can be learned from your team members as well. Leadership is a continuous learning process. It is not a straitjacket thing. It is not an all-knowing uh, practice where you say, whatever I say stands, and nobody else has a point to, 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 to tell me or to teach me or nothing to offer me. So in as much as you teach, you must learn. On this program, in as much as I told out some of these basic fundamental concepts about leadership, your feedback gives me various lessons that I, I pick a lot from. Then I apply it to my own style, and it, it's been helpful over the period. On my journey as a leadership uh, practitioner, I always look out for opportunities to learn from whoever I come across. So as leaders, we must know that this paradox also exists. We must be teachers, and at the same time, we must position ourselves to learn. The least person, in quotes, within your team may, be, may offer you a very long-lasting lesson that will guide you in your leadership uh, pursuit. Now, while leaders expect timeliness and things to be done on time, they must also have timelessness at the back of their mind. While things must be done within a certain time, there must be things that go beyond. There must be 
sustainable. There must be things that are sustainable, not just for the moment, for the, you know, just to satisfy the requirements within the moment. So that is another paradox that leaders need to appreciate. So, so far, I have made about eight points on the paradoxes that are very common. The vision is there. The blind spots are part of that vision. Visibility and invisibility. Leaders need to be visible, but at the same time, invisible. Leaders need to teach, and at the same time, they need to learn. Leaders need to kind of appreciate the fact that they must be stubborn in the pursuit of the goals. Focus on pushing their team members to overcome challenges, but at the same time, they must have an open mind. And so all these will have to be part back at the back of our mind. Personal interest and collective interest is another thing that we need to focus on. And the last one has to do with the fact that there are standards that must be set by leaders. But at the same time, leaders must have the emotional intelligence. They must be able to appreciate why certain things occur, why certain things did not occur, and be forgiving at the same time. So these are the various uh, eight items that... Now, let's move further. There was a research conducted by a PW, Pricewaterhouse, and they came out with a couple of paradoxes within the setting of the current development. That has to do with the fact that we find ourselves in a world where volatility and the complexity around our currencies around us require that leaders must choose between very critical, you know, paradoxes. And these paradoxes, as you can, if it can be uh, shown on the screen, you will see that leaders must be humble and at the same time they must display heroic uh, characteristics or qualities. So if you are a leader and all you think about is being a hero, being a hero, the current times require you to be humble, to be offered options, alternatives to whatever it is that you are talking about, for people to appreciate what is it that is required of them. So humility and being a hero are very key to, you know, your success. And strategic, the second one has to do with being a strategic executor or executioner, if you want to put it that way. Whereas you have your goals, according to the research findings, it is said that whereas you have your goals ahead of you, that you want to execute at all costs, you must be strategic as well, because certain occurrences within the space require that your actions do not focus on only today. Your actions must focus on tomorrow. Strategy, what benefits? What benefit will that action or that goal in your or bring to the business, bring to the organization, bring to the community? All this must be at the back of your mind if you want to succeed as an effective leader. Now, being traditional and being an innovator. Earlier on, we spoke about the fact that if you want to be a leader, you have the vision but you must also appreciate that there are blind spots. And you must also allow people to be innovative. So your, your regimented approach, you are so fixated in your, you are convinced, not so fixated as such, you are so convinced about the vision, about the goal that needs to be achieved. But this is the way we have done it, and this is the way we must do it. You must make room for innovation especially in the space where technology is at its, you know, peak, where things are changing. Today we are talking about artificial intelligence on the rise. Most of the things are coming on a daily basis. Just a couple of days ago, I saw a new device that is going to, or that is being seen as the new revolutionary, you know, um, uh, device that is going to change the space of uh, telecommunication across the globe, where it's just a reflection of an image in your palm and you have access to all your communication that needs to be done. I believe a couple of you have 
seen that video making the rounds about a new device, a very small device that is being you know, put out there. How well positioned are you as a leader while remaining very glued onto tradition, your values as a company, your principles? How are you allowing people to be innovative? That research is saying that and as much as you are very much traditioned, you must be open to innovation as well. Now, tech savviness and being humane or being humanist it's been projected that by 2030, a lot of things will be IT-based. Artificial intelligence is taking a whole lot of things. But leaders must recognize the fact that the humane part of teamwork is also very important. If you are a leader, you must appreciate that, yes, in as much as we have to use technology to solve most of our problems or to address some of our issues or to pave way to the attainment or towards the attainment of our goals. We also need to appreciate the human factor, the human contribution. You must be humane, you must be considerate, whereby you do not necessarily have to say, okay, because we are using technology, everybody else should be out. You may need a human being to facilitate. In fact, it is the human being that operates those machines that you use by way of technology. Now, Globally, everybody's target is global, you know, um, positioning. But you must operate locally. They said that the popular saying goes that operate locally, but be globally minded. That is also another choice, another paradox that leaders must tune their mind to. Now, high integrity and being a politician. Politician here is not about partisan politics. Organizational politics where leaders need to you know, maneuver their way around a whole lot of stuff, at the same time maintaining their integrity. How do you go about it? On this note, let's take a quick break, and then when we come back, we shall continue the conversation. Welcome back. So far, so good. We have touched on a whole lot of issues, and I believe that you have enjoyed the conversation so far. Uh, let me quickly open the phone lines so that you can have ample time to join in this conversation. The phone, lines, uh, the phone line for this conversation is 0531 982298. 982298. If you are out of the jurisdiction, just add plus 233 and you'll get through to us. You can equally send a WhatsApp text and it shall be read on the program. Now, to continue the conversation, some few realities also must be spelled out. In order to lead, we have established that you must also serve. How do you lead? without serving. You must appreciate the fact that leaders serve. That is why on this show we believe that servant's leadership is key to success of every team. A leader cannot stand aloof and watch the team members do everything. Leaders must demonstrate, they must be exemplary in their approach to leadership. And to get respect, you must give respect. Good afternoon, Doc. Good afternoon, Priscilla. Good afternoon, Doc. I hope you are fine. Yes, please. I'm doing very well yourself. I'm fine. Please go ahead with your contribution. Yes, this is a very great um, program. I'm really enjoying it. Very, very, very insightful, very educative. Please, I would want you to um, explain 
further on being visible and invisible. Okay. If you, you can do that for me. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Um, and thanks for the compliment as well. It is for you and I. We all, we are within the space to make a difference. So your participation is also very uh, commendable. Now, when we talk about visibility and invisibility, is as a leader, it is not, you cannot be everywhere. That is an established fact. That leader, the leader cannot be everywhere. And there are times, that's why we, we, we encourage delegation, the power of delegation. Sometimes by way of teaching, you need to also allow people to act in your stead. And by that, they learn. And it will not be seen as you always trying to dominate or to be everywhere, to be seen as the one who is in charge. And so visibility and invisibility, My name is basically... You mentioned uh, about uh, a blind spot or blind side, which I didn't get clearly, so I would like you to take it over for me again. Oh, okay, all right. So Thank you. thanks for, for, for that. Right. You know, you. you have the vision. You have the vision that you have convinced your team members about and you are pursuing. But you must appreciate the fact that there may be certain things that are oblivious to you. There are certain points that you may miss. And so as they occur, as those things come to the fore, you must appreciate and recognize them and work on those things. Because as you, when you set out, when we talk about even strategic uh, management in general, where you set out your vision and then you work through all the plans that you need to execute your vision and your, your mission or to, towards the attainment of your vision, there may be blind spots that you may lose sight of. So as they come up, you should be able to, you know, quickly recognize those blind spots, work on those blind spots together with your team members before proceeding, because they may impact greatly on the vision. So you do not ignore those blind spots, because the blind spots basically means that you are not conscious of those things. But as they come up and you appreciate that they are blind spots, what do you do about them? What do you, how do you handle those things? They are things that you cannot push to the background. You need to work on them. So that's basically or fundamentally the explanation with regards to the vision and the blind spots. There will always be blind spots in your... Thank you very much. Wahab, from Wahab, good yes. afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah, how are you doing? All right, your contribution, please. Uh, I want to find out something. Did they give birth to a leader or is by training? Did they give birth to a leader or is by training? I, I, I did not get your point. Are you saying um, leadership is it by birth or by yes, training? Definitely. Okay. Yes. On this, on this program, we have established that in as much as some people have natural capability in leading people, where they, they, they are able to draw people to themselves and offer direction and mobilize them to achieve a great lot, others who are largely those who are trained, those who learn how to do it. And that is one of the, the reasons why we are rolling out this program, for all of us to learn leadership learn the rudiments of leadership so that we can all complement each other towards the attainment of the goal. So some people are gifted naturally because in your community you see that some people, when they are, wherever they are, everybody gravitates towards them. Everybody listens to them. Everybody wants them to lead them. But others, they have to learn. They have to go through a certain uh, intentional uh, system or approach to acquiring their leadership skills before they will be able to do those kind of uh, or exhibit leadership quality. So it's both. But we believe that by and large, leadership is learned. You have to learn the skills. You have to go through the rudiments, the practical lessons therein. You must go through them. There must be intentionality behind your approach to learning leadership. There you will be able to you know, offer yourself or accounts uh, very well when it comes to a leadership. So that is our point on this program. Now, while we are waiting for a further contribution from you, our cherished audience and uh, viewers, we'll continue to make the point that 
you, for you to be humble, you have to also be assertive. Humility doesn't mean you have to be timid. You must also be assertive. You must be assertive in your mindset, in your approach to doing things. You, you cannot afford to say it is all about, you know, being humble. So that is it. A caller from Pukwase. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Your name, please. My name is Ni. Ni? Tete. Yeah, I am. Okay. Your point, please. Yes. I'm following your program, and this is really, really good program. Yeah. But what I want to ask is, how do you manage um, as a leader within the team where you notice that there are some team members who are not following your goals or your agenda? I mean, such you can point out as uh, the enemies within. How do you manage such situation to make sure that you bring these people into what the vision is and to match them along the line for value realization? All right, thank you. Thank in, you. In season one, we, when we were talking about teamwork, we highlighted the fact that in as much as the leader will spell out clearly the vision, the direction, and be able to guide the team members or be able to explain why certain things must be done and how it is important to the group or to the team. Others will have the tendency of sitting aloof and watching to see what will happen. As a leader, it is within your space also to appreciate the fact that these things exist and how do you cater for them. You cater for them by identifying such people, being proactive, identifying them ahead of time, or as and when they come up, you engage those individuals further. It may not necessarily be all by yourself. It can be through other members within your team who will be used to engage such people to appreciate the impact their behavior or their inaction is having on the team. So you, if when you identify them, you don't write them off immediately. There are rules, but to every rule, there's, there are exceptions where you need to appreciate the fact that, look, there may be reasons why certain things are being done. These reasons must be sought after. You must appreciate, you must understand those reasons or the perspectives of those people, and then you offer further uh, where the team is going. I believe that with that, we are on the same page. Now, if you want to have answers to questions or to provide answers, you must ask questions. You cannot afford to, to you know, expect answers when questions are not asked. For example, within your team, there comes a point in time when somebody comes to you with a question. You may not necessarily have to be quick to provide answers. You may want to seek clarity to the question by asking questions to have clarification before you provide answers. Because in, in, in communication or in addressing issues from a leader's perspective, sometimes some of us find ourselves in a tight corner where we are quick to judge our understanding of the question from the person may not necessarily be what the person, you know, is implying. So you want to seek further clarification before you offer uh, answers. So if you are in the business or you are interested in providing effective answers, workable answers to, you know, problems or issues or challenges, you need to be interested in asking the right questions as well as a leader is something that leaders must also focus on. And now to get something done, leaders must do some of the things themselves as well. Exemplary. We have spoken about this on this show, that leaders must be exemplary. You do not give instructions and expect it to be done. When even it is reported back to you that there are challenges, there, there are challenges thereof, you still insist that it must be done. You, must, you may want to demonstrate to your team members how it is done. Remember, those of us who were on season one and we watched it very well, we spoke about an equation called trust equation, where your credibility, reliability, and intimacy 
divided by how you carry yourself, self-orientation, you know, it endears you to the heart of your team members. It's able to give them that trust. They're able to look at you and say that, yes, you have what it takes to lead us. So if, again, you want things done, you must demonstrate that you have capability to deliver it yourself. So exemplary leadership is very key as well when it comes to ensuring you know, effective leadership and overcoming the paradoxes or managing the paradoxes of leadership very well. Now, let's also take a quick look at some other aspects of leadership where, or paradox of leadership. For example, let's get a scenario, a typical scenario, where the leader is very pretty sure about the goal that has been set from, for the team. How will he go about it? Let's get a caller from Dodoa. Dennis, good afternoon. Yeah. Fidelis. Yeah, Felix. Felix, this is Felix. Felix, good afternoon. Yes, yeah, afternoon. You are welcome to yeah. Leadership 360. Yeah, I, I want to make my point. Okay, please go ahead. Yeah, you see, my point is that, uh, you see, the leadership, you know, the, there's no, there's no, uh, there's no law against the leadership. Or there's no, uh, there's no law against the leadership. The leadership, they do whatever they want. Hello? Hello? Yeah. Yeah, Please, I, 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 yes. I hear my point. Yes, I can hear your voice. You said uh -huh. there's no law against leadership. That's yeah, leadership. why people do the kind of things they do. Yeah, and then sometimes too, if you watch uh, the judiciary, the judiciary, the, 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 the nation, but sometimes the, the leadership and the judiciary, sometimes they make one. That's why sometimes if you watch it, this make some of the, uh, uh, the country are not moving all right. All right, um, Felix, I appreciate, I appreciate the angle you are coming from. But on this program, what we want to, you know, throw out there for all of us to appreciate is that leadership is an act. It's not a science. It's not a straight jacket thing. It's an act. It's an act. So we are all still in the process of learning. So what we are doing on this program is not to judge what people do, but it is to just educate all of us that there are better ways of doing things. Nobody knows it all. So let's all appreciate that, indeed, there are aspects of leadership that we may not get right, but through this kind of discourse, discussion, conversation, we we'll appreciate that, oh, okay, so there are other aspects of leadership that we all need to, you know, uh, take a second look at. So we are not judgmental on this program. We are, we are not saying there must be law and nature to guide the behavior of people. But there are, you know, intrinsic values that leaders must appreciate or must imbibe in themselves if they are to be effective. And so we spoke about the fact that as much as you want your personal interest is, you know, uh, hitting at you every now and then, the collective good must also be allowed to play, you know, at the end of the day. So it's very important for all of us to, to appreciate that. On this program, uh, so far, uh, we all appreciate that there are divergent views across board, but there's a culminating point. There's a meeting point that all of us agree as well, that, look, when we told this line, things would be better for all of us by way of teamwork for the betterment of our communities, uh, our country, and the continent at large. But thanks for your contribution as well. Now, I was painting a picture that I was painting a picture earlier about the fact that leaders sometimes get fixated on a certain vision. The challenges may come. You may want to take a second look and say, okay, so how what how do I am a proud and firm African. I will take a stand. I will lead and be the change. Come and take my hand. For the safety, Hannah, and welfare of my country and company come first. Always and every time. The Hannah, welfare, and comfort of the people I lead come next. 
my own ease comfort and safety come last always and every time I love this honor code so much that if all of us appreciate the fact that our own ease, comfort, and safety comes always last and every time, we will be in a better place. Now, if you are appointed into a role, you are a first-time leader of your team, there are critical questions that I want to leave for all of us, or you are even within that space now. There are things that I want us to ponder on as we leave or we, we bring this program, this afternoon's program to a close. It's a food for thought in the form of question or questions. Have you taken a moment to reflect on the criticality of what is expected of you as the leader of that team? Or is it just about yourself? Are you going in the right direction? Are you pretty sure that you are towing the right direction for your team? Will it inure to the benefit of the entire group? How relaxed and confident do you feel when you are not there? When you are not present, when you are absent from your team or your workplace, how confident are you that the team members can carry on? What leader are you becoming? It calls for self-introspection and self-assessment you should be able to find very sincere answers. And either it will compel you to do something about it or you continue to do a better, you know, take better actions at improving them. On this note, it's been amazing having you around. I have personally enjoyed the show. Your engagement with those of you who are able to call in was very insightful. I appreciate it. Let's make time with this Leadership 360 next week, Thursday, same time. But the show for today will be repeated on Saturday at 1.30 p.m. Thank you, and let's have a beautiful rest of the week.